Carbon is the most common element in living things, and it's the backbone for a lot of essential molecules, so it's incredibly important. This cycle is also the only one in which humans play a very large role, and it's separate from the role of other animals. So the form of carbon exchange we're most familiar with is the CO2 that's released from respiration and photosynth photosynthetic processes of plants and animals. So both animals and plants breathe out carbon dioxide when they perform cellular respiration, and then plants will breathe back in carbon dioxide through photosynthesis, and then they fixate this carbon, which means they take the carbon dioxide, a gas, and turn it into a solid. Um, so they turn it into glucose. And the amount of CO2 that's breathed out by these plants and animals is approximately equal to the amount of CO2 that's breathed in by plants. So this is the first part of the cycle. Now, a lot of carbon also comes from the decomposition of dead organisms and waste products. If you remember, a lot of biological molecules have a heavy carbon content. So when plants die, for example, or when animals die or produce waste, the carbon content in their biological molecules are broken down and deposited into the soil and this is what creates the second part of the carbon cycle. Over tens of thousands of years this carbon content then turns into fossil fuels. So originally without the help of humans decomposers completed the cycle by eating decomposed bodies and performing cellular respiration and then that would release the CO2 back into the atmosphere to be used again. But with the introduction of burning fossil fuels, carbon is being drawn out of the soil reservoir, burned, and released as CO2 into the atmosphere. So the burning of fossil fuels is taking carbon from one reservoir and dumping it into another reservoir. So what exactly burns fossil fuels? So humans burn fossil fuels for a lot of different things. Like, for example, if you're trying to generate heat for your home, you're burning fossil fuels. If you're turn on, you, you need air conditioning during the summer, you're probably burning fossil fuels. If you're manufacturing goods like clothing or food, these all are probably deriving their energy from the burning of fossil fuels. And so humans are really rely on the burning of fossil fuels, but the problem with the burning of fossil fuels is that it's knocking the carbon cycle out of balance. If you remember, we talked about how the amount of CO2 that plants and animals respirate out is approximately equal to the amount of CO2 that um, plants breathe in during photosynthesis. But now you're adding more CO2 through these auto and factory emissions of the burning of fossil fuels. And plants can't remove that much CO2 from the atmosphere. So that means more and more CO2 is being added into the atmosphere as time goes on. And another problem is the fact that fossil fuels are generally a pretty stable reservoir of carbon. So carbon stays in the soil as fossil fuels for a really, really long time. Like I said, it takes about 10,000 tens of thousands of years to create these fossil fuels, but it only takes a couple hundred years to burn these fossil fuels and release them into the environment. So clearly there's a natural rhythm of the carbon cycle that's being seriously disrupted. So now that we've completed the cycle, one last thing that's good to remember about the carbon cycle are the different reservoirs. So one we talked about are the fossil fuels. Another reservoir is the sediments in the rocks. Um, a third reservoir is the ocean for carbon. And another reservoir we talked about, the atmosphere. And the final reservoir, the plants and animals. And this completes the carbon cycle.